So coming to the facility design and management, a building for whatever, you have so many buildings on this world and we are adding every month one city the size of New York to this world. And that's a huge amount of buildings which are going on on this world. And then each building is one of the biggest source of pollutants, climate change. And this design will have a major impact on the environment throughout its life. So I was just building a, another small facility. And during that, we thought we will take a lot of these uh, concepts and try to make it greener. And green buildings itself is a huge component for the building industry. And they're trying to adopt it uh, all across the world. And we have to adopt these green buildings concepts for the hospitals, what we are building. There are various ways, the materials, what we build, the bricks, the cement, all of them create a huge impact on the climate. And we can use which are uh, materials which are environmentally friendly. The processes of building can be made more environmentally feasible. Our engineers can advise it, their consultants do it. The designs means the light, the energy, what we use for the building, the water, what we use and how we dispose our waste all that can be made more environmentally friendly, like insulated windows and walls, especially in colder climes and in warmer climes, how to make it cooler. So the buildings should breathe rather than having a complete full-fledged air conditioning. We can plant trees to modify our microclimate around our facilities. All this we should be aware of. The various parameters under which we can uh, consider this is energy, water, the waste we generate, the food we and our patients or staff eat, the transportation, what we all do. So there are technologies available to make this feasible. And initially we should adopt it. Then we should advocate for it being mandatory for the future to be done. We have a very small window period in which we can change because COVID, which has suddenly fell on us, so like that in the next 10 years, 15 years, climate change will suddenly fall on us before we realize it. So all of us should do a, do a bit for that. The operating room protocols, which generate a lot of waste uh, are being discussed by Dr. Venkatesh. He will let you know that. And the energy usage, the energy we use for lighting our environment. So this can be having like having bigger windows during daytime, we should not be using artificial light when we have so much of natural light, especially being a tropical climate. And then the temperature. In India, at least it's mostly cooling rather than heating what we need. And for that, we should use very efficient air conditioning and appropriately used. The building design can be made so that they breathe, uh, so that fresh air you have to let in. And only during summer months, we really need air conditioning. And the mobility, both the lifts, what we use, the transportation processes can be made greener. Electricity, we can generate our own electricity like on, in this building, which uh, we are trying to copy from our uh, energy. This is a building which uh, has given the design for us. And though that building is environmentally sustainable. We are trying to copy that building. And we can use our rooftops for solar power generation, which will decrease your monthly outgo. And as well as you need not depend on coal powered or uh, any fossil fuel powered energy. Plus it will save you money and it's good for the planet. And you have to conserve whatever electricity, use it to the minimum uh, possible by having good appliances and sensitizing our staff for its conservation. Regarding water, we have to reduce the usage because water is pumped from a river, at least for Hyderabad, from Krishna and Godavari, which is two, 300 kilometers away. It's filtered, cleaned, and pumped at such a huge cost. And using it to the minimum possible for our needs is good so that so much effort is not uh, wasted. The runoff from the rooftops can be used easily. If you incorporate it into the design, you can recycle the water. The gray water can be used for flushing or for the garden. And the excess water, the storm water which goes out can be recharged so that our bore wells again will provide us with water during later times. Waste segregation is a big concept which we still in Hyderabad are not following well. 
the important thing is to reduce wastage, minimize the packing and uh, whatever material, what we use, paper, plastic, and then we have to make effort to recycle that and get it back to use again, rather than dump it into the atmosphere and each time go for a new resource. Same with sewage treatment plant, try to decrease your outlet by using the gray water for your own purpose. And what has to go out like the sewage uh, has to be let into the uh, environment and it is, has to be treated properly before it's let out into the river, which ultimately ends up as somebody else's drinking water. The biomedical waste, which we generate has a lot of uh, either uh, bacterial or human waste, which is uh, not good. So this has to be treated properly by having the waste incinerated, taken to a proper disposal site, and this has to be followed. Otherwise, the rag pickers and other children, as we see, come with uh, inju injuries with syringes, which have been discarded, and the needles they've been playing, and the glass, which has been discarded. So we have to dispose our, regular, our waste responsibly. Food, food is one of the biggest sources of uh, climate uh, change uh, or the heat trapping gases. So plant-based foods are good. I like to eat non-vegetarian stuff, but I'm changing now. It's quite late, my quota is over, but still we'll have to depend more on plant-based food because the cows and the animals release a lot of methane into the environment by burping uh, and that is not good for the environment. Proper storage of food so that it's not wasted and properly we should avoid wastage of food in our day-to-day -day lives. Transportation is another big sector. We have, as you all know, the cost of fuel also has, has increased and it makes good sense for us to invest in electric mobility, two wheelers, four wheelers. We can use ethanol, which is a, or a biodiesel for our generators and avoid uh, uh, fossil fuels from the earth. And we should try to encourage uh, electric vehicles and uh, the government and uh, companies will come up with charging infrastructure slowly. Regarding pest management, we have to avoid wood in the OT, as you all know, because uh, that attracts insects and termites. And the integrated pest management, what we use in our facilities, which are directed at mosquitoes, rodents, termites, should, we should try to avoid harmful chemicals, which stay in the environment for many, many years as residues, which we again indirectly ingest. And we have to go for organic ways of dealing with this pest management. We have to sensitize our staff regarding use of energy, water, and other resources. Uh, it's not only the matter of economics, but it's the whole uh, environment. Uh, that's what should be the uh, focus on. Electronics also, we are using more of electronic stuff these days, and we have to dispose of the e-waste properly because they have very, uh, Toxic chemicals like mercury and other things, especially our batteries and everything have to be disposed of properly. And we have to try to buy uh, electronics which make less uh, energy usage and which are more efficient. So this we've discussed about, about the rooftop uh, solar uh, panels, which we can put them, insulate our windows and uh, design our buildings properly. And we have to use appliances which are very energy efficient. Thank you very much for your attention.